Hey everyone's Jackal Wolf back in Sky Factory 4 with another five minutes. That's how I did it. Now, if you've been following along, you know that we are working our way through the advancement book. Uh, last episode, we did the uh, Come Fly With Me, which is to craft a Vizcraft aircraft to fly around, uh, and the Floaty McFloaty, which is to start a new island in the void by placing a Floaty McFloaty block in the air. This episode, I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys, we were going to be doing something completely different. Uh, you can see I've got two advancements here, uh, Who Sold the Cookies from the Cookie Jar and the This Baby Can Fit So Much Matter. Uh, this was the advancement that I was going to work on and I wanted to finish off this cookie clicker which is to fill a cookie jar with cookie singularities. The problem is I need eight stacks of cookie singularities and that means I need um, like... 80,000 cookies total. So I had a whole system set up. I ran into a power problem. Uh, I, my power system was basically just could not handle it. Uh, it took me a day to just to do a full, uh, you know, stack of cookie singularity. So that is not acceptable. Uh, I think it's high and, you know, well time that we go and we, you know, sort of upgrade our, uh, you know, power situation from our upgradable uh, geothermal generator uh, to something a little bit more, we're going to say large, <laughs> I guess. Uh, so what we've got here is the size does matter uh, advancement, which is to build a max size 24 by 24 by 24 nuclear craft fission reactor and while we're at it we're going to go for this gone fission which is to build a nuclear craft fission reactor that produces at least 25,000 rf per tick now when i embarked on this one uh i did not realize that uh, this was going to be quite the production that it was as well. Um, a little bit of math. I did a little bit of a stream on it to prep up, uh, you know, do a little bit of practice with it. Uh, we calculated that it was something like 17,000 blocks uh, to make this, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, the outer edges by themselves is like 3,500 blocks. So um, I got that all set up, all ready to go. I did a test. During my test, I accidentally threw like 3,500 blocks into the void uh, of this, you know, super important blocks, blocks that I absolutely needed. Uh, so I went, I restarted, I redid the test, but I didn't do my, redo my save game on it. And I ended up throwing the, the blocks back into the void. So uh, originally I was going to keep my blocks over there. They are now all uh, in my storage remote. I'm not going to risk throwing them off the edge uh, into the void one more time. So if this uh, episode seems a little bit uh, awkward, uh, that is part of the problem, is I've spent a lot of time setting this one up. After setting the other one up, which I'm only halfway done, uh, I just got to get this one done. Uh, I am way behind on videos, and it is certainly not helping. So uh, to build a nuclear craft fission uh, reactor, one of the things we're going to need is a bunch of fuel. Now, there are a, a number of uh, different fuels in Sky Factory 4 uh, that we can use uh, for these fission reactors. Uh, that's all of these little um, guys over here. We're going to stick with the basic one, the TBU fuel. Uh, and basically, that is done by uh, using some thorium-232. And we get the thorium-232 uh, by using a isotope separator. So to make an isotope separator, we are first going to need some basic plating. Uh, basic plating is uh, two lead ingots, two graphite dust. So put them in our inventory there. We are also going to need two copper solenoids. That is going to be four pieces of copper, two iron ingots in a crafting table. It gets us two copper solenoids. Uh, we are going to take those two copper solenoids, put them into a crafting table with four steel ingots, an iron ingot, two gold nuggets. That's going to get us an electric mortar. Uh, we are also going to need a machine chassis. Now, a machine chassis is four lead ingots, four steel ingots, and a tough alloy. Now, all of this stuff we've made previously, I'm not going to get uh, into it uh, too much, but that gets us a machine chassis. If we take the machine chassis, the second electric motor, the four basic plates and the two pieces of redstone that gets us our isotope separator. We're going to go come over here. We're going to go place this up here. I've already got a processing cable ready to go. Uh, it is going to be powered now. What we need to do is we need to go and take some thorium dust because we're going to make that thorium isotope and we're going to take one of them. We're going to throw it in here and it's going to start processing this. Uh, this is really, really slow. I don't want to sit here for that. So I've got some speed upgrades and energy upgrades. That's going to speed it up. 
Every piece of thorium dust that we uh, process is going to get us a thorium-232 and a tiny clump of thorium-230. Now, we could use this uh, to make other fuel uh, later on, uh, but we're just going to stick and uh, focus on this thorium-232 for the moment. We're going to go up to our processing cable. We're going to get our thorium dust. And then we're going to get back the one piece of thorium and the one tiny clump of thorium. Uh, it's going to go and process that in the background. And when we are ready, I'm going to go and turn that uh, all into uh, fuel. All right, so while that uh, fuel is processing in the background, what we're going to do now is we're going to build a small version of a fusion reactor, mainly to power, uh, you know, this builder over here, uh, but also kind of a uh, demonstration of the concepts behind uh, building a uh, fusion reactor. So uh, what we're going to need is we're going to need more of these basic plates. Uh, there are going to be two lead ingots and two graphite dust. We're going to take four of those basic plates and a tough alloy. That is going to get us four fission reactor casings. Now, this is exactly what it says it is. This is going to form the outside of our reactor. Uh, an alternate block that we can use for the outside of our reactor is going to be a transparent fission reactor casing. Uh, it's exactly the same as a fission reactor casing, except you can see through it. Uh, to make a transparent fission reactor casing, it is going to be four pieces of glass, four basic plates, and that tough alloy again. Now, we're going to need a way of interacting with our uh, fission reactor, and that we're going to, to do that, we're going to need a fission controller. Uh, so to start, we're going to have to upgrade some basic plating to an advanced plating. Uh, to do that, it is one basic plating, four tough alloy, and four pieces of redstone. Uh, we're also going to need a machine chassis that is four lead ingots, four steel ingots, and a piece of tough alloy. Uh, we are also going to need some nuclear furnaces uh, that is four basic plating, four tough alloy, and a furnace. We're going to need two of these total for the controller. Uh, and we're also going to need some magnesium diobride solenoids. Now, uh, that is going to be four pieces of magnesium diobride. This is very, very tough to see on, on my screen and as well as on your screen. And then two pieces of tough alloy there is a slight shade difference uh but it is not much it is very easy to overlook that and to think that you actually need six of this magnesium diobroride or you know six tough alloy but uh four and two is what you need that gets us our two magnesium diobride solenoids so we're going to take the two solenoids the two uh, nuclear furnaces, the machine chassis in the middle, and then four of the advanced plates. That's going to get us our fission controller. As well as having a way to uh, control uh, the uh, fusion reactor, we're going to need a way to uh, pull energy out of that. Uh, to do that, we're going to need a fission reactor port. Uh, that is going to be two fission reactor casings, a hopper, and two copper solenoids. Now, that is everything for the outside of the fission reactor. We're going to need a whole bunch of stuff on the inside. Uh, one of the things we're going to need a lot of is going to be some reactor cells. Now, this is a, the a part of the, the fission reactor that is actually going to process the fuel. Uh, to make a reactor cell, it is a four tough alloy and four pieces of glass. We're also going to need a fission reactor moderator. Uh, in this case, we're going to use a graphite block. There's one other uh, one as well. It's a little bit more complicated to make, uh, but for now, this one will work perfectly for us. A graphite block is simply nine pieces of graphite ingot in a uh, crafting table. Uh, we're going to need a bunch of those ones as well. And last but not least is we're going to need a way to cool down our reactor. It, you know, by nature, it is uh, going to uh, kick off a lot of heat. So we're going to need a, uh, you know, a, a number of coolers uh, to bring the temperature down. There are a whole bunch of coolers uh, for this uh, mini reactor. Uh, we're going to go and we're going to use an emerald cooler, uh, but all of the coolers are going to require an empty cooler block. Uh, to build these, it is going to be four pieces of tough alloy and four steel ingots, and that's going to end up getting you two empty coolers, which is quite handy. Uh, we're going to take one of these empty coolers, we're going to put it in a crafting table with six pieces of emerald. This is going to get us an emerald cooler. Now, uh, I will get into uh, some of these other coolers a, a little bit uh, later, but uh, for now, uh, this is the one that we're going to use. Uh, something to keep in mind, these three blocks are all position sensitive. Uh, they all have certain uh, requirements uh, about where you place them that are going to affect how the uh, reactor operates. So this emerald cooler must be adjacent to at least one active modulator block and one reactor cell. So uh, the reactor cell is here, so we have to make sure it is adjacent to a reactor cell. 
and it has to be adjacent to a moderator block. Now, there are active moderators and inactive moderators. An active moderator actually has to be next to a reactor cell. It's almost like a puzzle. There are some really, really good, um, you know, designs out there. There is a, a very, very useful tool out there called the Nuclear Craft Reactor Planner uh, that allows you to, uh, you know, pre-build these on sort of like a spreadsheet and it will evaluate uh, your layout and all of that and show you, you know, which blocks are active, which blocks are inactive. Uh, and, you know, it will let you know if your, you know, reactor is going to overheat or if it's going to manage to stay cool. So uh, I'll put a, post a link to that down below. Uh, there was a, no way I was going to be able to figure this out uh, on my own without using this tool. So it is very handy. I highly recommend it. So like I said earlier, uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to build a small version uh, of this fission reactor, uh, mainly so I can show off and, you know, uh, kind of explain all of the uh, concepts that go uh, into a building fusion reactor uh, without us, you know, getting into the actual building of a 24 by 24 by 24 reactor first. So uh, to start, I've got a, a lot of blocks here. I've got 45 uh, fission reactor casings. This is going to be enough uh, with these eight transparent blocks uh, to do a uh, three by three by three three uh, fusion reactor. Now, when I say three by three by three, I mean three by three by three on the inside. To start, we're going to go and place down uh, nine blocks on the bottom. This is our three by three by three. So this is the space on the inside of the reactor that we want to calculate. Uh, I'm going to go and place blocks here, here, and here. These are just so I can kind of get up and build the walls of this because we're going to go and do that first. Okay guys, so we've got our uh, basic inside shape. I'm not gonna put a top on yet. I'm not gonna put a front on it yet. Something to keep in mind though is this is not a cube. The cube the, the, that we are measuring is on the inside. So when you're doing this, you know, 24 by 24 by 24, it's 24 by 24 by 24 on the inside. It do not count the outside blocks. Uh, and I guess as a way to, you know, make it obvious, uh, they have taken out the edge blocks. If you have these edge blocks in, it actually won't work. Uh, you can have one or two, it seems to work fine, but uh, if you've got too many of them, it's, the whole reactor just will not work and it, it's going to be a big problem. You would have put a lot of work into it uh, for it not to uh, actually work for yourself. So what we want to do now is we want to plan out our the inside of our reactor. And I've played around with this, you know, a couple of different ways. Uh, there are countless different ways of doing it. Uh, but one way that I found that seems to work really, really well, especially, you know, for smaller ones where I've only got one type of cooler, I'm going to take this emerald cooler and we're going to go right down the middle here. Now, if you remember the tool tip from before, it must be adjacent to one active mod moderator block and one reactor cell. So let's start with the reactor cells. We're going to go and place one here, one here, and then one up here. This one here is not affecting these emerald coolers, but the emerald coolers are touching these two reactor cells, which is allowing these ones to be activated, or will allow those ones to be activated once we add these mod or these graphite blocks, which is the moderator block. Uh, we're going to go and fill in the last three spots with the moderator block. So the moderator block had to be uh, adjacent to a reactor cell. So the moderator block that one is active. These two moderator blocks is activated by that one in the corner there. Uh, the three emerald cooler blocks are activated by the reactor cells and the graphite blocks. So this is a fully functional layout. Um, and once we get it, it all filled in, we can actually I can actually show you you know what the uh, heat in and heat out uh, is for this design. So let's go quickly and fill this in. Okay, so that is the uh, filled in a uh, reactor. Uh, it doesn't have to be columns all the way up, but you know, for this uh, simple design, this one works really, really well. I'm going to take nine blocks. We're going to go place them on the top. I'm going to go, I'm going to take the uh, fission reactor port. I'm going to put it down here in the bottom, and then we're going to go and use this glass one just to fill in the front of our reactor. I, I, nothing really happens on the inside, but it does kind of look a little cool, you know, seeing on, you know, the inside of this reactor. Last thing we need to do to make this a, a functional reactor is we need to go and place that controller. Now I can place this controller, you know, inside of, you know, this face here and it will work perfectly fine, or I can just go and place it on the outside 
side and we are doing good as well. Uh, one thing to keep in mind before you, the reactor will turn on, it does need a redstone signal. Uh, for now, we're going to stick with just a simple lever, uh, but you can actually set it up so it is a little bit more automatic that it will turn itself off when, you know, the, the batteries are full uh, or, you know, runs out of fuel or it gets too hot. Like there's a couple of different things that you can do with that. Simply, we're just going to put the uh, lever on for the moment. Uh, now, if you remember back at the beginning of the episode, we were making ourselves some fuel. So I'm going to go grab our storage remote. We're going to go open that up and I'm going to type fuel in my simple storage network. We got brought up all of these uh, different items. We're going to go focus on this TBU fuel. Again, we needed this thorium 232. We've got a bunch of that in our system by now. Uh, the thorium was being produced by our uh, resource hogs uh, that we got from the twilight forest. Uh, just in case you're kind of wondering where that was, there, there's a lot of stuff going on here that it's, I got to kind of skip some parts, but uh, we're going to go move that over and we're just going to go make a full stack of that fuel. Uh, that is going to be absolutely perfect. We're going to go open up our fission controller. We can see we can go and let's throw one piece of fuel in there for now. You know it's been added because it's disappeared. It is now part of this. Uh, it is going to. It is telling us that we're going to make fifteen hundred RF per tick. Uh, and right now our total heat is minus 630. We've got nine cells, which is the cells, um, which is measuring the actual fuel cells on the inside and TBU. That is the fuel that we've got uh, in our system. So we hover over this bar here is the heat level. It shows that we are negative 624. That means we are producing less heat than, uh, or we are cooling more heat than we are producing. And then energy, you know, we have not actually started it running fuel remaining for 13 minutes though. So that is really, really good to know. So we're going to flip that switch we're going to go on here you can see the heat is not going up uh, but our energy is going up which is exactly what we want so uh, that is good this is going to you know this is going to be a nice small little reactor for what we need to do now uh it help us build this bigger reactor so like I said previously, uh, I was doing some tests on, uh, you know, making sure I didn't miss any uh, steps and uh, I had all of my resources over here uh, in a filing cabinet and twice I ended up throwing the file off the uh, off the platform into the void, losing like 3,500 blocks. So I do not want that. It All my stuff is in my simple storage network now. So to start, what we're going to do is we're going to build the base of our uh, reactor. So uh, we are going to need our fission cells you can see we've got 4k worth of them here and actually let's clean all of this up for the moment and we're going to get our building tools ready we'll keep the fuel right here and that energy cable can go up so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and fill my inventory with these fission reactor cables without going over and throwing stuff uh into the void uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up the structure builder now i built this uh, as well as the building gadget and the cyclic building scepter quite a little while ago. Uh, this was a really fun, that was a really fun episode. It was really, really useful. It was mentioned, you know, in the comments of that video, that it would be really kind of cool to see, uh, these, you know, used to build something proper. So that's, this is, this is what these are for building, you know, large structures, uh, makes them super, super easy. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start with the structure builder. Uh, I'm going to turn it off for the moment. Uh, there's all of these options here. Uh, we could, you know, go and make ourselves, uh, you know, a square, uh, you know, to do the walls and stuff like that. One of the problems with the structure builder uh, is that it only does odd number of blocks. We want to do a 24 by 24 um, reactor. That means we need 24 blocks, not 25, not 23. Uh, we need to make this 24. So how we're going to get around that is we're actually just going to bring this up uh, to 11 because this is a radius. So from the center block, it's going to go out 11 more on each side. And while we're at it, let's go and bump this forward a little bit. We're going to click the preview hidden. We have now got the preview on. You can see it is a solid line. That's what we're working on. We're going to go and turn that into a solid. Now you can see this is a solid platform. Oh, we're going to get into the view of it. Try that again. I don't know why. Sometimes it disappears. Sometimes it doesn't. Really, really quickly, we're going to count two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 
23. Now, like I said, if I bump that up by one more, this would end up reading 25. We need to, you know, go in the middle of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this to build the uh, bottom layer, and then I'm gonna add one more row on the outside and then on the back, and that is gonna get us our 24 by 24. So we'll go back in here, we're gonna go and fill this up with a layer of fission uh, reactor casings. Uh, I've done this math before, I think we'll end up with like maybe about half a stack left over. We're gonna go power on, and you can see it is starting to build this one for us right away. All right, so there you go. There is our 23 by 23. If we come back down here, yeah, you can see we've got 47 left over, which is perfect. Uh, what we are gonna do now is we're gonna go and go to our building gadget. I'm gonna go and shift, click on the reactor casing. It is now gonna pull reactor casings out of my uh, inventory and use it with the, the building reactor here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go add one down below and then we're gonna come all the way over to the end here. And if we click that and just manage to line up, uh, we got one extra, which is perfect. That's what we needed. We're going to come back over here. This one I want to be right here. And then we're going to hit that. And I don't want to be too far. I'd rather be one short. No, that's perfect. Okay. This is now 24 by 24 by 20. Or this is now 24 by 24. Uh, next up, what we're going to do is we're going to build some walls. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here. I'm going to go and find about the middle. We're going to place that there. I'm gonna go, actually let's land down here. I'm gonna hit G, cause I'm using the crafting gadget now. We're gonna hit G, we can now, you know, design or decide how we're gonna do this. So I wanna go, I wanna build a vertical wall and that should actually be everything that we need. Now you see it is now, that looks like a five by five. We're gonna hit G again. We're gonna go bump this up to 24. There we go, so now, if we hover there, I think that is perfect. And we'll come around. That is good on that edge. And then this one is one lower than what we wanted. We'll place this guy here and we'll do this wall. There we go. Okay, so that is all good. What we are gonna do now is we're gonna go hit G. Uh, we do build. We'll do build to me. And then we'll go place uh, one right here. We'll come up all the way up to the top. And then we're gonna finish that corner there. We'll come over here and do the same. Okay guys, so I am back. Uh, I finished the uh, outside four walls, uh, similar to what we did on the smaller version. Uh, next up, we're gonna work on uh, doing some stuff uh, in the uh, interior of uh, this reactor. Uh, we could do the same pattern we did before uh, using the emerald uh, coolers, uh, but I kinda wanna show off uh, some of the other coolers and uh, like show how uh, complicated uh, some of these builds can get. So uh, each cooler has its own sort of benefits and you know drawbacks. Uh, and have to be placed in you know very very unique ways. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to build ourselves some water coolers. Uh, to do that, it is simply a bucket of water in a crafting table with an empty cooler. Now. If we did this one for as many as we're gonna need, now we're not gonna fill up the inside of this, we're gonna do a smaller version, uh, but even the version we're gonna do is gonna require at least 90 of these uh, cooler blocks. So uh, that is a awful lot of uh, buckets of water uh, to go out and you know manufacture. Uh, luckily, Sky Factory 4 or Nuclear Craft has a, uh, a separate or a, a second way of uh, doing this, and that is by using a fluid infuser. Now, uh, to make a fluid infuser, it is a Four advanced platings. Now we showed that one that recipe off earlier. Uh, two gold ingots, a machine chassis, a bucket, and a server mechanism, which I think we did show earlier. We've showed it before in a previous uh, video, but uh, that is how you make yourself a fluid infuser. We're gonna go and place this right here, and we're gonna open it up. We do need a little bit of power, so I've got a GPS marker. We're gonna go place that down. We've saved that GPS location, and we're gonna come over here, and we're gonna throw it in our energy transfer. For node. So this should now be powered 
and that's absolutely perfect. It is pulling water from our metal drums. This was stuff that I had left over from like the dehydrator and things like that. Uh, but I could have easily gone and filled this up and, you know, just sort of brought these over here to make them simple. Uh, we're going to go and we're going to take a case in there. You can see it is slowly going up. Uh, I'm going to want those a little bit quicker. And I think we are done with our fuel for the moment. We're going to go come back here and throw those in there. And it's going to start kicking those out quite a bit uh, quicker. Uh, next up, we're going to go and we're going to make ourselves a redstone cooler. Uh, that is going to be a empty cooler, two blocks of redstone and two pieces of redstone gets us a redstone cooler. Uh, there is also a lapis cooler. So it is a one uh, empty cooler and two blocks of lapis. Uh, we're going to do a diamond cooler uh, that is a empty cooler and eight diamonds in a circle around it. Uh, and then the last one that we're going to look at today is going to be a quartz cooler. That is going to be a empty cooler, two blocks of quartz and six pieces of crushed quartz. Quartz. So these are the five uh, coolers that we're going to use uh, in our giant fission reactor. And if we open up our you know inventory here, we can kind of hover over them. Pressing shift will open up a little bit more info on it. So uh, the water cooler cools at a 60 H uh, per tick. Must be adjacent to at least one reactor cell or active moderator block. The redstone cools at 90, but must be adjacent to at least one reactor cell. Uh, lapis cooler, uh, you know, cools at 120, must be adjacent to at least one reactor cell and one reactor casing. Uh, the diamond cooler uh, cools, uh, cooling rate is 150, uh, must be adjacent to at least one valid water cooler and one valid quartz cooler. Quartz cooler uh, must be adjacent to at least one active moderator block. So you can see this becomes very, very difficult when you are mixing and matching, but you really, really want to do that to get, you know, the, the best output that you can. And how are we, we got 64 there. Uh, let's go and uh, just move you over. Can I pick you up and we'll put you there and we're just going to finish off these water guys and then we'll be right back. Okay guys, so we are back and I'm ready to start building the inside of this reactor. So uh, to start, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the pattern that I've got set up uh, and ready to go. So we're gonna start with the lapis cooler uh, on the outside. So must be adjacent to at least one reactor cell and one reactor casing. Now the reactor casing is the outside and the floor, it'll be the roof uh, of our you know fusion reactor. So a lapis can only really be going out on the edges of our uh, reactor here. Uh, it also has to be adjacent to one reactor cell. So that's where we got the reactor cell going next. Uh, the water cooler is going to follow that. That must be adjacent to one reactor cell or active moderator block. So we've got the reactor cell. We're putting that next to uh, the water cooler next to that one. It is an either or. It does not have to be both. Uh, we're going to put the diamond coolers next to the water cooler. Uh, must be adjacent to at least one valid water cooler and one valid quartz cooler. So we've got the water cooler on one side, the quartz cooler on the other side. Uh, the quartz cooler must be adjacent to at least one one active moderator block. So our next block is going to be our graphite block, which is our moderator block. To make that active, it's going to be next to a reactor cell. Uh, this reactor cell, is, we're going to put it next to a redstone cooler on the, the outside of it, and it must be adjacent to at least one reactor cell. So we've got a completely valid uh, configuration here. And for this one here, we're going to go to our uh, building scepter. Uh, you can see in the bottom right hand corner there, I am on the uh, inventory. If I shift and you know mouse wheel i can go select the different options uh, i do want that inventory we're going to go right click on it and we can now start putting these up here in our pattern so uh normal use blocks right to left is normal we do not want that we want to actually use a pattern we could do random random is not what we want in this case we want to be very very specific and we're just going to go and bring all of these blocks up to the top and then we're going to go escape out and we can now start placing these in a pattern. So we're going to come over to our corner here and I'm going to go shift. I'm going to go to the up uh, arrow. This is going to build a block up 
of whatever block that I select. So if I select this back wall, that block is actually going to be built up at the top. That's not what I want. I want to build or select the one on the floor. And there you go. There is our lapis cooler. Now we're going to go and start moving sideways. So we're going to go flip this over here. And I have eight different items that are, are going to be out or given out in a pattern. You can see in the bottom corner again, there is the reactor cell. So we're just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there you go. There is our pattern. We're going to come over here and we're going to go up again. We're going to click there and then we're going to go back to our, go to the right and we're going to go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> So there is our back wall all of said and done. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go flip that back open. We're going to go take our inventory back out and we'll just go take it like that. I don't need to keep it that organized anymore. We're going to go and switch back to our building gadget. And again, we're going to go hit G and our range. Let's go drop this down to 10. Actually, we're going to drop it down to nine. We're going to do a, a build to me and we're just going to go and we're going to, have to count out how many spaces we've got. So we've got one. This is going to be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we don't want to go any further than this. We're going to come up and up and up and up. Okay, guys, so we are back. We have got our uh, initial little bit uh, of our uh, reactor. I'm going to go and place the walls on and the roof on, and then we're going to jump right back, and uh, I'll see you in a moment. Okay, guys, so I am back. This should be a legitimate reactor now. Uh, I've, like I said before, I've only got the little bit in the back corner there, maybe an eighth of the total uh, fill capacity. It's probably closer to like a twelfth. Uh, I've got one port over there for now. Uh, you may hear, uh, I did not think to light up on the inside. I don't know if that was going to affect anything or not, uh, but I do have some mobs in there, so that's not going to be good either. But let's go down here. We're going to go open this up um so we don't know how much rf yet but if we go take our tbu fuel 53,560 rf per tick uh our heat is minus 1524 so we are cooling more than we're heating which is exactly what we want and then our energy you know again should be 53,560 rf per tick so hopefully this is a lot if i need more i've got a lot of space in there uh, so we're going to go flip that on. We're going to right click and there you go down the bottom. Gone fission and size does matter. We'll open this up. It is slowly kicking out uh, the energy there. You know, the 56,000 per tick. Uh, I've got 88 uh, holy hell, thousand are at, like, I don't even know what number that is for storage capacity there. Uh, but the fuel, fuel remaining, uh, I've got 15, 14 seconds of fuel. Um, but that's good. We've got a lot of, you know, a lot of power coming out of that. That's exactly what we want. Um, so <laughs> that is going to be it for this one, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you did this any differently. I'm very, very interested to know about uh, anybody else's uh, configuration uh, on the inside. Uh, let me know, you know all the different ways that there are to do that. Uh, I think it's going to be really, really cool to find out. But uh, if you enjoyed this video, please think about leaving a like and a subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Jackal Wolf. Uh, check out the description below. There will be a link to my Discord page. I would love it if you guys stopped by to say hi. As well, there will be a link to my Patreon page. Uh, if you enjoy this channel, if you enjoy this content and you want to support, stop by, check it out. Uh, there are a lot of great perks out there, but uh, that is it. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Try to get a good shot. <laughs>